Hi, I'm State Representative Eli Ivankovich. We're here at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. We're speaking with Assistant Professor Dr. Nowak about a disease that is becoming more and more common in our area and one that the average person in many cases knows little about, uh, and that's Lyme disease. Uh, Dr. Nowak, thanks. I appreciate you coming out. I think it's a really important topic for everyone in Pennsylvania, but especially Western Pennsylvania. So let's just start there. Uh, what's going on with, with ticks and Lyme disease? Sure, we, we really are in the middle of an epidemic of Lyme disease in Western Pennsylvania. This is a disease we used to see in Eastern Pennsylvania on a, a really regular basis. But in the last 10 years, what we've noticed here at Children's Hospital, and the state has noticed as well, is an incredible surge in cases of Lyme disease in children in this area, as well as adults in general. For example, at our hospital, we used to have about 10 cases a year in 2001, 2002, and last year we had almost 450 cases of Lyme disease at our hospital. Now, Dr. Nowak, uh, this is a, a disease that, that touches me personally. Uh, I have uh, friends and family. In fact, uh, uh, my oldest child uh, was recently uh, diagnosed with Lyme disease and is under treatment. Um, is it in any way overstating the case to say that it's an epidemic? I think it fits the perfect example of an epidemic. Our, our surge in cases has, in most areas, gone up 10 to 50 fold versus the, the previous rates. And the problem with that in an epidemic area is that people don't recognize what they're seeing. So physicians have to learn to recognize Lyme disease. Parents have to learn to recognize it in their children. Uh, everyone in the community needs to be aware that we have a lot of ticks that are transmitting the disease in our area and they have to take appropriate precautions when they can to keep themselves safe. Maybe that's a great place to start. Um, can you give us the uh, uh, dummies uh, book of Lyme disease? Uh, what, 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 are the, what are the important things for the average person to know about what Lyme disease is and, and what the symptoms are? Sure. Lyme disease is a, a disease we've known about in the United States for about 40 years now, first described in the 1970s in New England. And since that time, we've noticed a steady movement of Lyme disease out of New England and into the entire Atlantic coast, including Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania is now the state with the highest number of Lyme disease cases in the United States, according to the CDC. It is a disease you acquire from a tick bite. So a tick that's infected with the bacteria that causes Lyme disease will attach to a person and bite them and transmit the disease to them. Now, if I can just ask, um, is there a particular amount of time that it takes for the disease to transfer or is, can it be almost immediate? Sure. The time it takes after the tick bite for the disease to transfer is about 48 hours. So one of the things we're always encouraging people to do is try to identify if they have a tick on them. If you can get that tick off within the first few hours after it's attached, you will be safe and you should not be in any danger of Lyme disease. It does take some time for the bacteria to transmit to a human. And now once a, once a parent uh, notices that uh, their child has a tick or they have a tick, um, what should they do? When a parent notices or on themselves or on their child that a tick is attached, we really would um, encourage them, first of all, remain calm. A lot of people will get very nervous or very scared when they see that. And then a very simple routine. Get a good pair of tweezers, grab that tick right near the mouthpiece where it's attached to the skin, and just slow and steady pressure remove the tick from the skin. And the tick will come out on its own? The tick will come out on its own very nicely there. Sometimes folks, if they're a little bit over generous with the force, they'll leave a little bit of the tick in the site. And in that case, what we encourage is that they put a little neosporin or other topical antibiotic on there, and then that piece will fall off on its own eventually too. And then what should a parent do after that? Well, for the most part, many folks will not know how long the tick's been on. And so we will always counsel people if they're concerned that they may have gotten Lyme disease from the tick, if it's on them or on their child, Observe the site. One of the nicest things about Lyme disease is that it's predictable. So after you're bitten by the tick, you're going to have a very specific rash that looks like a bullseye develop at that site and expand outward. I'll counsel parents to watch the site for a couple of weeks. If they see no rash appear, then they've gotten the tick off effectively and nothing has happened. However, if a rash does develop at that site, that's the time to go see your doctor and get treated for Lyme disease. Now, you know, given, given the exposure I've had to Lyme, there, there, are some, uh, there are some nuances, I would say, to the disease. It's not, it's not necessarily the most predictable thing 
uh, in the world and that uh, there can, my understanding is there can be uh, false negatives to a blood test, that there isn't necessarily a conclusive way to fully diagnose. Can you, can you talk about that real quick? You're, you're right, we have a lot of challenges with Lyme disease. Uh, the first part is the testing. It's not a great test, especially in the early stages of disease. Most of the time, the blood test will actually not be positive. And so it may sound strange. We actually encourage doctors in the community, if they see the very typical early rash, don't send the test because it will be falsely negative. Just treat that patient for Lyme disease. The good news is that later on, for children or adults who've had the disease for weeks to months, the test becomes more and more reliable as time goes on. However, the disease can be very tricky. It can have very unusual symptoms or very routine symptoms that persist that may make you think that you have a, a long case of the flu or you may just have some joint pains that don't mean anything else. Those folks who are getting investigated, we should use the test in because those long-term symptoms inevitably come with a positive blood test. And, and so what, what kind of a time frame are you talking about in, in terms of whenever you first uh, perhaps contracted a disease to where it becomes something that's very serious? The time frame for Lyme disease development uh, is a very predictable one. Once you have had the tick bite, the rash should appear within the first two to three weeks. That rash will fade, and in some people it gets missed. If you would get a tick bite on the back of your head, you'll never notice it. The symptoms that come after that predictably start to develop around six to eight weeks. Symptoms of f multiple rashes all over the body, symptoms of arthritis, weakness and drooping of the face. Some folks will even develop chest pain and cardiac problems from that. That's around six to eight weeks. And as time goes on after that, we do see a lot of cases of a more chronic arthritis, but that tends to develop months after the tick bite. One of the problems with Lyme is that you can develop symptoms of Lyme infection more than a year after you've been bitten by the tick, which makes it a challenging diagnosis. And, and not to be uh, alarmist about it, but what are, what are, the, worst, what are the worst case scenario? What, what's the, what's the, the worst conclusion you can reach with Lyme disease? Well, the worst cases of Lyme disease can involve the heart. So we have definitely have children here have to be in our intensive care unit because they have problems with the function of their heart, their rhythm is completely disturbed, and the heart is not working well at all. We have folks who get meningitis from Lyme disease, and it's quite common in the summer months for us to see children with meningitis. And then the arthritis, when it happens, doesn't sound like such a bad thing, but we have a number of folks who end up having to have several months of antibiotic to cure that, and a few people, especially adults with arthritis, might need surgery eventually to cure it. Those are the direct effects. The main thing that troubles people, though, is symptoms that persist even after good antibiotic therapy. So a number of folks, especially adults more so than children, even when treated appropriately, still have very bad and persistent symptoms. They may interpret as ongoing infection. We're fairly certain, though, that it's not ongoing infection, just the damage from the bacteria that be can be very severe, especially in adults. So, you know, in, in terms of trying to prevent the disease, right, because uh, obviously someone like you, uh, your expertise is, is in treatment, um, and you'd probably prefer to have the prevention <laughs> yeah. rather than yes. the treatment. So what, what kind of tips would you offer to, to adults, to children, to parents, uh, community leaders uh, for the prevention of the disease? Prevention of the disease, I think, uh, is key. And I'm, I'm so glad that you came today to ask me about this because I think education is key as a part of prevention. The first thing we want everybody to know is that it's here. You know, incredibly, there's still some folks in our part of the state who don't know that there's so much Lyme disease out there. Number two, I really want people to be aware of ticks. Ticks are the only way you're going to get Lyme disease. You can't get it from another person. You can't get it from a mosquito. It's transmitted by one insect. So we want people to look for ticks, especially when they're enjoying the beautiful parks and the beautiful state lands we have around here where we want people to be out and active about. We want you to check for ticks when you're going out in those places where we know there's a lot of tick population and if you see ticks, remove them. And then finally, we want people to take simple precautions that can help prevent the tick getting on you in the first place. If it's cool enough, we want you to wear long sleeves and long pants. If you're going to be going out in the summertime, a little bit of uh, tick repellent or insect repellent will certainly be able to keep a tick off of your skin. And is there a particular skin. chemical in, that, that you're looking for that, that 
Great question. DEET is the key chemicals. DEET is a component of most commercially available insect repellents. Between 10 and 30 percent DEET, whether it's on your skin or even sprayed on your clothes, will keep any ticks from attaching to you. It's a safe and an easy way to keep you and your family safe when you're outside in Western PA these days. And now, now I'm a I'm a small cattle farmer. Uh, I have uh, two dogs. You know, we go outside. The dogs run around. They get ticks on them. Inevitably, we find ticks in our home off of our pets. Um, once, once a uh, once a tick is is in your home, is there any concern about uh, infestation? Is is there, or is it just that one tick? You deal with it, and it's done and over with. It's a great question about pets and how you deal with them. Uh, Ticks don't infest your home in the way that stink bugs or other insects will, but your animal bringing in a tick that may attach to a child or another person in the household is something significant. We have had cases where we're fairly certain it was a pet that brought a tick into the household and Lyme disease resulted. So we really urge people, make sure your animals are getting their tick treatments. There are very easy over-the-counter treatments for ticks that will prevent them from getting infected. I'd also add that dogs can get Lyme disease. So it's in their interest for you to protect your pet and keep them safe as well. Getting them their effective tick treatments is going to protect your pet and it's going to protect the whole family from having a tick come in and then start the disease cycle in the house. So I guess in, in, in a little bit of conclusion, what would your overriding message be to parents, to adults, to children about Lyme disease? My overriding message about Lyme disease would simply be be aware and be aggressive in getting something worked up that's suspicious. So be aware that it's out there. Ticks are in our environment, they're all over the place. Take the simple measures we talked about to protect yourself. And if you're suspicious, if there's a rash that's suspicious, if there is a symptom that's suspicious that really fits with Lyme disease, go get it checked out. The State Department of Health has a great website about Lyme disease symptoms and how to seek treatment. The Allegheny County Health Department, in particular, has nice resources online, as does the Centers for Disease Control. It's a real issue in Western Pennsylvania. I want people to be aware, educate them with good information from those sites, and then go ahead and get care. It can be at your local pediatricians, at your local family doctors, or you can come to Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, and we will try to get you checked out and make sure you're safe. So in the world of sound bites, be safe, not sorry with Lyme disease. Be safe, not sorry with Lyme disease is exactly the way I'd say it. Now, going back to a, another thing that you'd said earlier, um, you had mentioned that physicians sometimes aren't up to date on, uh, on the Lyme disease epidemic. What, what advice would you have for parents uh, to, to be uh, appropriately critical whenever they think that, you know, maybe the physician that they're going to see just isn't up to date on, on, on the medicine of the time? Uh, what advice would you have for them so that they can be comfortable knowing that, that in fact, they got the right sure. length of treatment, sure. the right type of treatment? I think any parent who's interacting with a physician or any adult who's interacting with a physician, we all need to educate each other. We certainly have parents in the community like you who are very educated, though they don't want to be, about Lyme disease because of their personal experience. And we have physicians in the community who are still learning. I think it's very reasonable as a parent to come in and say, this fits exactly with the things I saw on the State Department of Health website about Lyme disease. Could you investigate that? And the physician, hopefully, will have the motivation then to say, well, I want to look into this further. It's certainly a question that I get a lot, and I'm happy to share my knowledge. And we at Children's Hospital are doing a lot to try to educate physicians in the community. But it's never a bad thing to have a conversation with your physician, especially when what you're seeing in your child or yourself looks exactly like what you're seeing on a, on a reputable website. I know WebMD and the, you know, the internet culture uh, sometimes is, can be the, the worst enemy of medicine <laughs> because everyone thinks that they, you know, because the website said so, right? right. Um, what is a typical treatment plan in, in, in terms of length? Is it three days of antibiotics, seven days of antibiotics, sure. 21 days? What, what, is, what is, just so that people can be aware of what a typical treatment cycle would be. Sure. Treatment for Lyme disease is, is actually predictable on how long you've been infected. So initial treatments for Lyme, if you've just got the ring-like rash, which is the earliest stage of infection, run two weeks, typically. 
It's a little bit longer than you would think for a cold or a sinus infection, but this bacteria is slow to grow and slow to get taken care of by the antibiotic. However, if you had longer-term infection that's been established for weeks to even months, long-term antibiotics tend to be the case. And so at least three to four weeks of antibiotics are typically prescribed there. And for some patients with arthritis or badly persistent symptoms, we'll have to do even longer courses of therapy. At that point, hopefully, you're seeing your doctor regularly and they're monitoring you very carefully. Dr. Nowak, thank you so much for your time and expertise. Thanks for taking the lead on this. Thank you.